Hello, welcome to day two of water safety with Miss Frank. My name is Patricia Frank and I am the swim teacher at St. Augustine Prep and I run a nighttime and weekend swim school program called Schrader Swim School. I am here to talk about some safety um, rules and tips of what you can do at the pool or any um, open water for you guys to be safer, okay? I um, am going to go over how to swim with a buddy and be safe in the water today. I'm going to share my screen so that I can tell you some more about all of it. Okay, so the first thing we are going to go over is look at this cool picture again. Um, so I'm going over my model every time because it's a good model. Be safe while always having fun around water, okay? You can't go wrong um, with being safe while you're around water because then you're gonna have more fun, okay? So the first thing we're gonna go over today is um, calling 911. Why we would call 911, how we would call 911, and for um, when, okay? So who would make the phone call? So if we were at a swimming pool, most likely the lifeguard would call 911 if it needs to be called, okay? Um, if there's no lifeguard around and there's an adult, they probably will make it, but if there's nobody else around, you guys can call 911 if you need to, okay? And I'm gonna go over right now what you would call 911 for so that you know the difference, okay? So what would you make a 911 call for? Would you guys call if your friend has a bloody nose? Probably not, right? Most, time, most of the time, bloody noses go away pretty quick within a couple of minutes, okay? So you probably wouldn't call 911 for a bloody nose. Would you call 911 if you needed a Band-Aid and you couldn't find one? Probably not again, right? That's not a really big emergency that you're gonna need it for, right? So not a, a little cut or a scratch you don't wanna call 911 for. Do you wanna call 911 if somebody just got hit by a car? Absolutely. That is a, a, a big emergency. Somebody just got hit by a car, so you're gonna need to call 911 right away. Um, if somebody got a broken bone and their parent is nowhere around and you're at the park, yes, you probably wanna call 911, okay? Um, do you wanna call 911 just to talk and say, hey, what's up, how's it going? Probably not. They will be really mad at you guys and you'll be wasting the line for somebody who else is actually in an emergency and needs to get a hold of 911. Okay. Um, when would you make the call for 911? Um, if somebody is drowning and you've tried to throw stuff in to save them um, and they're about to go underwater, would you call 911 right there? Yes. Okay. You want to call 911 right away because if they start sinking to the bottom they can't breathe anymore and they need help immediately so the quicker you call 911 the better okay if you um if somebody gets hit by a car the quicker you call 911 the better we do not want to be youtube stars and decide to record it instead of calling 911 okay we want to be good samaritans and we want to be able to um help somebody instead of just video recording them and not getting them help Okay, um, make sure you guys tell them where you are when you call 911. So if you're at your house, tell them, hi, sir, or hi, ma'am, I'm at my house. My address is this number. Or if you're at a school, um, I would tell kids, or um, I myself would say, we are at St. Augustine Prep, please come to the school. Or if you're at a mall, you would say, hey, call me, um, come get me at Southridge Mall, I'm in this store. Okay, you guys want to give specifics to tell people where you are and then you want to put it on speakerphone if you guys can, because sometimes in speakerphone they can walk you guys through how to help until they get there or they can just calm you down until they get there. Okay, and then the last thing is don't hang up unless they tell you to. Okay, if they can't find where you are, you guys can keep talking to them to um, communicate where you guys are and how close um, they are to come in to get you. Okay. The last thing I'm going to go over is every pool deck should have a phone on it, okay? It is a, a health code. It's the law. They should have a working phone on their pool deck so that you guys can call 911 if it's needed. That doesn't mean you guys should call 911 if there is a lifeguard there. They will be using that phone, but you guys want to do it, okay? And the last thing, a locked cell phone screen. If you guys were to, let's say I'm your teacher at school, and 
you guys needed to call 911, but I was already in the water helping. And I tell you guys to go grab my cell phone and call 911. I have a locked screen on my phone, so none of you guys can mess with it. But if it's a locked screen, can you guys still call 911? All you tech savvy kids should know this, right? The answer is yes. You can still call 911 by swiping up. So on my cell phone, if I were to swipe up, it goes right into emergency call that I can press on the bottom left. And you would press that and you're able to call 911 right away with it, okay? Um, the next thing, how do you help the staff or another person in an emergency situation? What can you do as a, an individual to help them? At the pool, at a beach, a school, an athletic function, at the store or any other place, you guys can be good Samaritans by either standing back if they don't need your help and just calming the crowd down, or you can shout out to them. If it's only one person, they probably need help. Even if it's um, the simplest help, if they're giving CPR to someone, they might need you to call 911, okay? Or it could be um, at a mall. A lot of malls have AEDs. Those are the things that shock people back to life they might shout for you to go find an AED and bring it back. Okay, some simple things, if you're at, a, an, at an athletic function um, and you're in a school gym, most school gyms have AEDs as well. Um, and if there's nobody around to help, you could be that extra person that goes and helps them to see. Otherwise, you just ask questions. Do you need help? If they don't need help, that's fine. You just stand back and give them room to do their jobs. And if they do need help, they'll let you know, okay? Um, but most public facilities, the airport, the mall, a gym, a boys and girls club, a YMCA, um, a school, all those places have AEDs that can help shock people's heart back to life if somebody's giving them CPR, okay? Otherwise, they have phones around that you can make the calls there too, all right? That is calling 911. The next thing I'm gonna go over, all these different types of water. Okay, all of these are fun in their own way, I promise you. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna go over, swimming pools, okay? So a couple of these pictures, you can tell are swimming pools because it's clear water, okay? Clear water is probably the safer one that you can swim in because usually the, um, in swimming pools, they always have lifeguards um, and they're there to protect you. But the clear water also means that it's chemically balanced. That means there's chlorine in the pool that's keeping it safe for your skin and your body to be in, okay? So clear water is definitely safer water because you can also see the bottom of the pool. So that means if somebody goes under, you can see what they're doing, all right? The next one, there is pictures of lakes, rivers, and oceans. All of those are darker water, what we call brown water sometimes. And not that they're not fun or safe, but Sometimes they're not as safe because if somebody goes under in a lake that's brown water or dark or green water, it's harder for a lifeguard or somebody to find them if they need help and they go underwater, okay? But those are all fun places to go in. The other thing is they're green water and they're brown water. That means there's algae in them. They're not chemically balanced. So it might not be as good for your skin because they could have algae in it or different bacteria in it that could hurt your skin or harm your body, okay? Or irritate it. All right, so my next question is for you guys. Clear water or brown water, which one is the safer one to swim in? Clear water it is, yes. Clear water is the lifeguards and it's also chemically balanced, right? There's, there's chlorine in the water. Um, the next one, lifeguard versus no lifeguard. Which one is safer to swim in? I hope you guys all said the one with the lifeguard, right? <laughs> it is the one with the lifeguard. All right, and then the last one, look at all the different types of activities that you guys can do. So right now I can see in the pools, they are doing swim team, they're doing water polo, the best sport ever. Um, they're doing synchronized swimming and it looks like they're doing swim lessons. Okay, and in, um, in the ocean, the one in the top middle, it looks like they are taking a huge wave. That is something I would like to try someday is um, surfing. I think it'd be awesome and crazy all at once. 
And then the next ones, it looks like a lake or a river where they have three different types of boats, actually four different. It looks like rowing, kayaking, and sailing, all fun things to do. You can find all of these fun things to do, probably not um, surfing as much in every city and state that you live in, but you can find all of these things at some type of community pool or um, lake that you guys can try all these. They have these activities everywhere. So make sure you guys Google it if you're interested in trying it, okay? All right, my next one, safety topic of the day, swimming with a buddy. So who counts as swimming with a buddy, right? So I've talked about this before. It is a very important thing to do because you never want to be at the pool or a lake by yourself because it's dangerous, okay? You want somebody there that can help you if you need it, okay? So in these pictures, it shows a couple different types of buddies, okay? It could be your friend, a family member, a lifeguard, a teacher, a babysitter, or a nanny or a trainer, okay? Um, all of these pictures show these different types of buddies that count as it, right? Next one, what places should you swim with a buddy? All right, so it shows all these awesome looking pictures. So basically any place that has water in it, besides your shower or your bathtub, obviously you guys are young and you don't want to be in a shower or a bathtub probably with anybody else. You wanna be by yourself. So any other place that has a big body of water, so a lake, a river, an ocean, or a swimming pool, you guys should all be having a buddy to swim with, okay? And then when should you swim with a buddy? Anytime you guys are in these places with water, okay? So if you guys are just playing on the shore, obviously you still want a buddy there because um, it's more fun, but you should always have somebody there because if the, the water comes up and pulls you in, you're gonna need that buddy to help you. All right, what should you do? Um, so I'm gonna show this video. It has um, a lifeguard rescuing somebody in a really busy pool, okay? Um, there you go. You just saw the lifeguard jump in to save them. Lifeguards have a really hard job when it gets busier in um, hot weather because there's so many people that they're having to look for and watch just to make sure that they're all staying safe. Sometimes all these people look the same and then sometimes you can see splashing in the water and you go for that. Um, lifeguards eyes are constantly moving so they are a great buddy to swim with okay why should you why you should swim with a buddy they are the person that is going to be able to call for help if you guys get into trouble okay and it's more fun to swim with somebody so as you guys saw in that picture they were showing that two other lifeguards came in to assist that other lifeguard okay they are always going to stick up for each other and help each other and back each other up when they are needed All right, that was that video. I hope you guys were watching to it while I was talking to you. All right, this next one, it is a swim with a buddy video that I could tell that two teenage girls made during quarantine and it is a pretty awesome video. Um, it's kind of cheesy and funny to watch, uh, but it's, a, it's an important thought process that yes, it's shallow water, but they definitely are getting the point across. So watch this Swimming with a Buddy video. All right, 
So like I said, it's a, uh, some of the kids that I've shown this to already, they're like, oh, miss, they can stand. Yeah, but even some people who can stand that aren't good swimmers, if they lose their balance, it's hard for them to figure out how to stand back up. But the whole point was she was by herself before and something happened to her. And then she got rescued when her friend was actually there to save her. Okay, this is why it's important to swim with a buddy. All right, the next thing we're going over is um, topics of the day is the line on the bottom of the pool, side swimming, circle swimming, and competitive style swimming, and then what the flags and the tees are at the bottom of the pool. Okay, as you guys can see in this left side picture, it is a picture of a swimming pool. It has one lane line in it. The lane line is the blue and white striped lane that goes across the pool, and it separates each area of the swimming pool so more people can swim in a pool all at the same time without crashing into each other. Okay, and then the um, the line on the bottom of the pool, it looks like an I in this picture, but when you're swimming, it looks like a T. Okay, so that T is what tells you that you have to swim one more stroke um, before you hit your head on the wall. Okay, so when you're swimming on your front doing freestyle or breaststroke or butterfly, you only have to take one more stroke when you can see that T below you, and then you can touch the wall or you can do a flip turn. And there's that T on both sides of the swimming pool so that you know when you're swimming back and forth what it is. Okay, the flags. Every pool has flags above it when you're lap swimming and it's for backstroke. So when you're swimming backstroke, you need a sign that says when the wall is coming to. So that line that goes across each lane on the top of the bottom, it's a really skinny black line. I tried to make t uh, the flags and it didn't look good. So I just drew the line, okay? That line is, um, the flags are standard at every pool. It's the same amount of distance. So you know whatever amount of strokes you do on backstroke before you touch the wall, um, it's gonna be like that at, at every pool, okay? So that line on the, um, that, the, t uh, the flags, they tell you how many strokes you have to take before you turn over and flip turn in backstroke or before you have to reach the wall and touch the wall instead of hitting your head. Anybody that's hit their head on the wall, they know it doesn't feel good, okay? I was a backstroker, I used to hit my head on the wall when I was younger and most of all, I used to hit my elbow. The elbow actually hurts more than the head. It's not the phony, funny bone after all. Okay, so the next thing, um, circle swimming. As you guys can see with the red arrows, that is how you circle swim. It's like driving a car and the yellow lines on the ground, one side of the cars um, stay on one side and the other ones drive on the other, okay? The black line is what you're, um, you're swimming around in a circle, okay? So it's in that direction, you're swimming down on the right side of the black line and then you're swimming back on the right side of the black line. All right, so you're swimming in a circle swim fashion. You want to circle swim when there's two or more people in a lane so that you guys don't hit heads, okay? It's common courtesy in swimming that you wanna circle swim most of the time. If somebody tells you that they wanna side swim, it's that means there's only two people in the pool on um, each lane, and one of you is each gonna take one side of that black line and you're gonna swim sides. That's usually when you're swimming with a friend um, and you guys want to swim at the same time, you each take a side and you stay on that side the whole time. So in this instance, instead of circle swimming, I'm going to swim down on the right side and I'm going to stay on my same side. So it would swim back on the left side when you come back. Okay, so you're staying on one side of the black line. Your friend is staying on the other side of the black line. And then the last one is race style swimming. Most of the time you swim the fastest when you swim down the middle of the lane. So basically, when we tell younger kids to swim across the pool in a race, they're gonna try to follow that black line so that they can try to um, stay in a, a straight line and swim their fastest, okay? Um, that is what circle swimming is. I'm gonna show you guys this video so it can really demonstrate they're actually swimming circle swim so you guys can really understand what they're saying. So as you guys can see, they're swimming, all three of them are swimming on one side of that black line. And then once they flip over, they'll swim on the other side of the black line. That was, they, they just showed the T at the bottom of the pool. So they see that, they flip, and then they turn to the other side. This makes it easy so you guys don't run into people or hit them. 
When you're faster and you're behind someone, you're going to tap their toe like they just showed. You're going to go in front of them and that person will go behind you then. Pretty simple, right? All right. Now we're going to the last thing of the day, I think, is resting strokes versus competitive strokes. These are very important to know because in some of your first swim classes, you guys are going to learn how to do a front float and a back float like we talked about last time. And then once you get good at the front and the back floats, you're going to learn how to roll over because we want you guys to eventually swim a longer distance. So knowing how to do a resting stroke is important because when you get tired swimming on your front, you have to do one of the resting strokes. Okay, so a resting stroke or a recovery stroke is it um, it uses less energy to travel the same distance as a competitive stroke. However, it takes longer time to achieve that distance. So if you're resting and you're recovering from going fast, so you don't have to go fast, okay? Elementary backstroke, treading water, breaststroke, side stroke, and kicking on your back are all some of the um, resting or recovery strokes. Um, the first picture you see with the black shadows, that is what elementary backstroke looks like. It kind of looks like a frog swimming on their back. You're on your back so you get to breathe the whole time and float and you're also going to move a little bit forward each time you move your arms and your legs okay that bottom looking mega mind guy is doing treading water so in treading water you're moving very little but you're trying to keep your head out of the water so it almost looks like you're standing vertically in the water okay your head stays out of the water and your arms and your legs stay in the water all of the resting and recovery strokes, your arms don't come out of the water. That's why it's a resting stroke. And then the last picture I'm showing is the top right picture, and it is of a person doing side stroke. Okay, side stroke is commonly used um, in elderly people. They like to swim on their side and relax, but it's also used for lifeguarding. Okay, lifeguarding, you would use this to save somebody, um, whether you put them on your hip and you pull them to shore or to the wall, or if you have a red tube, you're going to put them on there and they're kind of sitting on your hip at the same time too. Okay, so that is side stroke. The next one is the competitive strokes. There are four competitive strokes. In order of how you would learn them, you would learn front crawl, also known as freestyle, backstroke, brush stroke, and then butterfly. Um, brush stroke is the hardest one to learn because there's so much that goes on with it but it can also be a competitive stroke or a resting stroke. All right, I'm gonna show a video of the four competitive strokes. All right, that was the four competitive strokes. I decided not to mute that music because every class I've shown that video to, they all kind of got a little hyped up and energized when they listened to that music, okay? That's the kind of hype up music you want to listen to before a race or any competition you do. Um, you want to get your ready music, um, your hyper music that's going to get you guys going, right? All right, that is the end of day two. So you guys can pull out your day two worksheets and work on them and um i lost you guys so you guys want to make sure you pull out those day two worksheets and remember they are just a bunch of different sheets that we went over um for today it's swimming with a buddy things it's just kind of the um coloring worksheets and questionnaire worksheets that they can go over to remind them of what we learned today okay if you guys don't have those worksheets, you guys can email me at schraderswimschool.com and I can get you guys these worksheets because I want everybody to know these um, because it's always good when summer comes around to have more water safety people than none. Okay, 
I would rather have you guys learn this and get it to your kids than not have them know this and have this experience, okay? Um, that is it for today. I hope you guys have a great day. I will see you guys for day three of water safety. Bye.